Hey, welcome back to Sean's Booster Garage. Today is part three of the Innovate SCG1 Boost Control install video. Uh, in this video, uh, it's actually going to be uh, just how to how to set it up. Uh, I've got it all installed. Uh, been driving the car around a little bit, just to understand how it all works. So, anyways, it's not actually uh, it's not actually too hard to navigate through. So, uh, it should be a pretty quick video, and. Um, yeah, stick around and uh, I'll show you uh, how to do it all. Yeah, okay, so uh, here we go. Here's the gauge. Um, it's uh, you can you can program this this um, this whole gauge right through the gauge itself. If that makes sense. Um, you can hook it up to the laptop, um, which uh, I think I'll be able to show you here too. Um, but it's really, uh, it's really just as easy to do it through, through the, um, through the interface on the gauge. So anyways, first thing we do is just turn the key on and you'll see it power up. So, um, <clears throat> you'll see it power up. So what's happening right now, you'll see this, uh, this is O2 heater. So it's warming, warming up the, um, the, uh, Y band sensor, um, to get into the menu, uh, you just hold the, uh, hold down the first uh button here on the left and then so now if you want to cycle through these just um the right button goes up and the left button goes down if you want to look at it that way if you want to change the wastegate duty cycle you hold in on this and it starts flashing so this wastegate duty cycle that's actually how you set your <clears throat> your uh, the amount of boost that you're looking for You'll see the uh, wastegate duty cycles at 30% right now. Um, so I'm trying to work up to 15 pounds of boost. So um, I think I'm around 10 or 11 pounds right now. So anyways, I just got to keep, I just got to keep ramping up the wastegate duty cycle. And all the way you do that is just hold in this button and you go up or you go down. When you're done, you hold in the two buttons or you can just wait too. Um, so then these other ones that we get to here are, um, <clears throat> are gain. So, um, I haven't played with that too much yet, but basically my understanding of what that is, is, uh, as you are, uh, as you get up higher up in the rev range, um, you may need to, um, increase the gain percentage so that, um, uh, the boost controller the boost controller will be able to hold uh the um the the uh, commanded wastegate duty cycle that you want so basically if you want 15 pounds of boost um the higher up in the rev range you get the harder it may be for the um for the controller to handle it so you gotta you gotta increase the gain so that it can it can keep uh, the pressure at right where you want it so we're going to go back into the screen again, hold the left button, um, wastegate duty cycle, gain, active pressure. So this active pressure, what that is, is, uh, this is what your wastegate spring pressure is. Actually, it's, it's, um, like my wastegate pr spring pressure, pressure is five PSI. And from, from the reading I've done and from, um, what they recommend to through uh, innovate is to go a couple psi lower than what your actual spring pressure is so what can happen if you have that uh number say if you put it in at five psi well by the time the boost controller starts controlling your wastegate your wastegate's already opening and so you could get into a situation where you end up with an over boost condition um so they recommend that you um set it like you know you know, anywhere from one to two psi lower than your actual spring pressure, um, and that just gives the uh, the uh, the boost controller uh, a chance to start controlling the wastegate, and uh, and when you actually get into boost, that it'll have control of it, and uh, you won't uh, you won't go over um, the uh, boost pressure that you've set. So back into the menu hold the left button 
waste gate duty cycle gain, active pressure, boost cut pressure. That's just what you set. Like I have my car uh, set for 15 and a half PSI. So um, if it goes any higher than that, then it's gonna it's gonna cut boost pressure, and the boost cut per, the boost cut percentage is 100 percent. So it's just gonna basically shut the boost controller down and your car will go uh it will only go as low as what your spring pre spring pressure is but at least it's better than um uh, staying at the 15 psi should something go wrong all right um, um uh afr start pressure so that's the uh i think this is the default setting so this is this is when it'll um when it'll start uh, reading uh, air fuel ratio um, along with uh, your boost pressure. So um, I basically just left it, I just basically left it at the, what the default was because um, why not uh, Why not have it start uh, monitoring it sooner than later. Okay, back into the next one here. Um, AFR cut, I got mine at 12.5 AFR, so if um, under boost, uh, if my AFR goes any leaner than 12.5, it'll cut the, um, it'll cut the uh, boost out of it too. So, uh, that was one of the reasons why I bought this um, controller was just to have some safety, some safety ability built in because I don't really have any through the ECU that I have right now. Shift RPM, I set that at 6,500 RPM. Um, that's for the uh, the shift light down here. Um, mine's not going to work yet until I get a um, um, uh, attack uh, attack module. So um, I got that coming. Oops. Uh, RPM mode. Um, that's, I think, uh, if you're, you know, if you're a two or a four, six, or eight cylinder car, I haven't got that set up. It's more to do along with the, uh, the do. That more works along with the uh, shift light. Um, man, you really gotta. You only got like 15 seconds, I think, of touching any buttons. RPM scale, so 10,230 RPM, that's a default, that's what I left it at. Uh, you can change the map units from um, what you see here, PSI to, I think, bar, uh, KPA, and then bar. So, I left it at this one. What's nice about this gauge, too, is it also reads, um, is it also reads vacuum. Uh, wide band O2 units, you can set that AFR or Lambda. I usually run Lambda actually. I just have it, uh, I just set the AFR the other day just to try something out. And here the wide band O2 state. So you can pick an LSU 4.9 or 4.2. And you can pick your fuel type and altitude compensation. Uh, we don't have any worries about that here. We're at sea level. So and then wait and then back to wastegate duty cycle. So, um, <clears throat> anyways, that's about it. I'm gonna let I'm gonna let this go back to uh, the uh, kind of the home screen. I guess this is what I usually run it in right here. So you'd have this. This is gonna the um, boost pressure is gonna be up here. The FR is going to be right here. So if you're driving along, and say you you went into boost and you're wondering what your boost was. Um, so you just did a poll and you're wondering what your peak boost was. So then you push this, bu this button um, and you go to here and it says peak. So it'll show you the uh, maximum boost that you achieved while you're doing a run. Um, and then also you can toggle through if you want. If you want the screen just to show wideband, it can show just wideband. Um, uh, 
if you want to show just boost, it'll show just boost. Um, anyway, so that's about it. Um, we'll, um, I guess uh, we'll, we'll cut out here and uh, I'll hook up the laptop and I'll show you how to uh, go through that. And it's, uh, it's just as easy, if not easier, actually, except uh, I just find doing it through the gauge. I mean, it's, you don't have to get a laptop out and all that stuff, but um, at least you do have the ability to get a laptop. And I guess you can dialogue through this. I haven't done that yet. Um, and I think also too, you can, if you had a bunch of different, uh, innovate gauges, I think you can hook them all together, uh, like, uh, put a community, like a sort of a communication cable between them all. And, um, and then you can set them up and, and, uh, data log them all through, uh, their, uh, logging software. So anyways, um, we'll be right back. Okay, so here we are in um, LM Programmer. So this is the uh, this is the program we use to go through um, and program the gauge. You can do pretty much everything I just handled through the um, through the interface on the um, on the gauge. You can do through here. So um, you see that uh, you can change the sensor type and gasoline. So then you go up here, you go to boost controller settings. And then so you can, so then you can set up the Y band O2 unit. So AFR, Lambda, uh, or display O2 percentage. You can change the map units. You can change the um, RPM settings. So mine's on the eight cylinder, uh, four pulses. Scales the 10,230. Shift RPM 6500, wastegate duty cycle, and and you just um, you just click on these and then change the number. That's it. The gain is at 10%. Active pressure is at three. Max pressure is 15.5. Cut percentage is 100%. Um, <clears throat> starting pressure for the Boost cut by AFR is 4.9 AF, uh, 4.9 psi, and the AFR cut is uh, it's at 12.47. So that's uh, that's really it. Uh, there's not much more to it. Um, you can see the gauge here. It's right now. It's in program mode. Um, when you're done programming, you can go back to here. And I haven't changed anything, so the program button is kind of grayed out right now. And if I change something in here, you just hit program, and that would uh, program the uh, gauge for you. And then unplug the gauge, and away you go. But like I said, you can do everything you everything that you need to do to the gauge. You can on the on the uh, laptop. You can actually do through the um, through the gauge itself. So, anyways. Thanks for watching. Uh, you can hear my son Liam behind me making some noise. But uh, anyways, talk to you later. Thanks.